Welcome back to Horoscoped. In our last video focused on Resident Evil 3's intro, we put Carlos in the hot seat. However, during this video I mentioned there were a few things we need to talk about. You might have noticed it even in one of the shots too. Carlos is out wandering through the void, way out of bounds, when he stumbles upon a floating door several meters above him. This door is pulsating with dark energy, and it looks absolutely diabolical. So what's in it? Well, let's find out. So the Resident Evil 3 Remake introduction is actually pretty interesting. More so when you have the ability to break out the constraints of the level to see how things function. It's possible to skip sections of Nemesis entirely, but most of these skips cause the game to hang up because as each of these incidents occur, they basically flip the switch for another set of objects to load, which usually includes plot required things. But for today, we're literally only going to focus on the apartment building as a whole. So let's rewind to where Jill wakes up in her bed and it is storming outside. This is a nightmare she is having and it is raining really bad. If we climb out the window, which we normally can't do, we can even see that the city streets below us don't even exist. This dreamscape isn't the same as the real world, and everything around us is cleared out. But what's neat about this scene is that if we head back inside, the mirror in the bathroom actually doesn't have a reflection. It's a copy of Jill that is designed to mimic our movements. But when you're free to move out of bounds, you get the ability to see how things work in ways they aren't intended. So by walking out of bounds with this Jill active, we can meet up with her in the middle of nowhere and actually face through her. But it was when I was messing with this Jill that I noticed something quite peculiar. There was another figure extremely far out of bounds moving. They were just a speck on my screen, but they seemed to move when I moved so I decided to check. It took an eternity to walk over there, but what I realized was that this was another Jill. So for some reason there are two Jills in this area, one up by the apartments and one way out here with nothing around it. This Jill behaved just like the first mirror Jill though, so I assumed it was a copy that a developer left out here. Given the distance, it would never be interacted with anyways, since it was so far out of bounds. But looking around this area, that's when I saw it. A strange, pulsating door in the sky that I could not reach. I had no idea why dark energy was flung from this door, but I absolutely wanted to go through it. There's just something about a magic doorway within a portion of the game that's supposed to be a dream that is super, super appealing. Unfortunately though, the first time I encountered this door I had no way to get up to it. So there was nothing I could do. Until Carlos, that is. Before jumping to that, a quick side note, that after the dream I somehow glitched the game by falling through some floor in the apartment as Jill, and my reward for doing that was a T-posing Brad out in the middle of the great beyond. The camera just zoomed out to him for some reason. I also got down to some city streets and checked out a lot of the cars in the areas that you can't normally access. Due to the sequence break, the city itself was broken and wouldn't load. It was kind of neat, but super isolating. I then stumbled upon a pack of low poly zombies who all looked the same. They just sort of danced in the street. This then led to a big zombie summoning circle with Brad smack dab in the middle of it. There was a bunch of zombies shrieking as they slowly dissolved into the pavement. I don't know if Jill was on something or what, but it was certainly a trip. Anyways, I just wanted to show that stuff off real quick, but let's get back to that door. So upon revisiting this section again as Carlos, I finally had the tools to get up to the door. I should mention I became headless because I was in a first person section, but forcing third person as a view. I was then able to make my way out of bounds and find the two copies of Jill who mimicked my movements. I then adjusted my height, so I was level with the door. This was it. It was time to walk through this beast. I was just above the door, lining myself up with it, when suddenly I went through a different door. I was back in the apartment building. Confused, I left this door and I was back out into the void, but this time there were buildings around me. After messing around a bit, I then noticed the door of legend was below me, but now I knew what it was. The dark energy leaving the door wasn't a spook factor. It was smoke from the apartment fire. And this is when I realized what was going on here. So the developers cloned the apartment building and had two tall copies of it. They were super far away from each other. Honestly, the random second Jill encounter makes so much more sense now. The developers built the dream world of the apartment at the front of the map, and then had the actual apartment map like a thousand in-game meters from it. Right before you wake up from the nightmare, you are teleported from apartment 1 to apartment 2, and the game carries out as normal. This door just happened to be the one door that wasn't hidden from the invisible apartment building that wasn't active yet. Perhaps because of the special smoke effects, it was treated differently. The entire world around it was merely invisible, and thus it looked like it was just a sinister door flooding in the sky. It's honestly really cool to see how they pull this off, and although the door wasn't anything special in the end, it's basically what led me to discovering this developer trick. Always a pleasure to see how game makers pull this stuff off behind the scenes. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and I'll see all of you again really soon on Horoscoped. Cheers.